evening is taken from Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, starting from verse 12 to 26. <clears throat> Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 12 to 26. Follow me as I read these, these verses from scriptures. The next day when they came out from Bethany, he was hungry. After seeing in the distant, distance a fig tree with leaves, he went to find out if there was anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Because it was not the season for figs, he said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And, this, and his disciples heard it. They came to Jerusalem and he went into the temple complex and began to throw out those buying and selling in the temple. He overturned the money changers tables and chairs of those selling doves and would not permit anyone to carry goods through the temple complex. Then he began to teach them, is it not written my house will will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the chief priests and the scribes heard it and started looking for a way to destroy him. For they were afraid of him because the whole crowd was astonished by his teaching. When, and whenever evening came, they would go out of the city. Early in the morning, as they were passing by, they saw the fig tree withered from the root up. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed is withered. Jesus replied to them, have faith in God. I assure you, if anyone says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, all things you pray and ask for, believe that you have received them and you will have them and whenever you stand praying if you have anything against anyone forgive him so that your father in heaven will also forgive you your wrongdoings but if you do not forgive neither will your father in heaven forgive your wrongdoings this is the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God this evening we our speaker this evening is Reverend Jay Kumar uh, Pastor has been serving with us for quite some time, but he's also known in, in, in the academic circle as well as he's, he taught at UTC uh, for many years. Uh, I think he was, Pastor, you teaching Greek? No. Yeah, for 24 years. And this evening, we have the privilege to hear him share God's word to us. We're so glad that you accepted our invitation this evening. We're so glad that you're here. Over to you, Pastor. Good evening, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Greetings to all of you. I am very glad and I consider this as a privilege to stand before you and share the word of God. I have been to this church as a representing UTC and especially when Reverend Jayamant was pastoring this church. After a long time, I consider this as a Real privilege. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for bringing us together to sit at your feet and meditate upon your word as we learn from your word, your message. Help us, Lord, to keep it at, your, at our hearts and practice in our lives. Let your name be glorified through our lives. We ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We have entered the Holy Week and meditating upon the various events happened that week, Holy Week, which ultimately led Jesus to the cross. And 
today what we have heard from the scripture two incidents mentioned the cleansing of the temple and curse in the fig tree through enacting these two parables so enacted parables jesus taught them important lessons here we see that on the day when jesus entered jerusalem was 11 11 entered jerusalem went into the temple and when he had looked around at everything and he endowed to bethany with the towel so that day he entered the temple and observed everything he looked around at everything and returned to bethany the next day morning the following day he came from bethany on the way to jerusalem we see here this incident cursing the fig tree all of us know this story in these uh, days even in christian circles we speak more of eco theology how to protect and preserve nature and we wonder how jesus cursed a tree so that it dried immediately the anger of jesus because he was hungry we know that jesus was hungry when he was uh, fasting for 40 days in the wilderness satan tempted him change this bread this stones into bread he he didn't fall into that temptation but now when he was hungry he got so angry and cursed the tree that no one will eat the fruit from you it's something strange in the life of jesus isn't it so we need to link the previous verse what we have read 11 he has already seen what is happening in jerusalem temple and now he is going towards the Jer- temple and so his mind is preoccupied with that the situation then of course he sees the nature of this tree all of us know at least uh, we must have read in commentaries fig trees first they bloom first the fig the fruits come and then leaves at least fruits and the leaves together come in the spring season but never when there are only leaves there should if there are leaves there should be figs that is the problem jesus observed here that too there it says for it was not the season for figs that is again the point it was not the season for figs isn't why should there again they say that you no know, early season or later season and now if, uh, if you want to eat mango certainly mangoes are available in the market but we'll say still it's not at season mango season right the same way it's not at season fig season but because there were leaves he expected the trees to give the fruits so he contempts the hypocritical nature of the tree the tree shows as if the tree is full of leaves and fruits but it failed to give 
And by doing this action, Jesus is not really condemning the tree, but the people who are hypocritical, especially the people who are ruling the temple, the temple administrators, the officials, Sanhedrin members, the chief priest and the high priest, the others who were exploiting the people. They engaged in selling and buying. It looks as if they, are, they were helping people coming to worship in the temple. Helping them to exchange the money so that they can offer coins without any icons, any uh, images. The same way cattle or pigeon, here the pigeon is mentioned, especially the pigeons meant for poor people to offer, especially for purific purification. So it looks as if they were helping, but however, when we study the situation of the temple, the context, the history, the temple was ruled by a group of priests, relatives, cousins, uncles and nephews. Nepotism was there. And they made large profit. When there was a revolt by the select group once, they came to Jerusalem temple. The first thing they did was to go into the underground and taking all the records and they burnt the records having all the accounts because the rural people were exploited and the urban elite were enjoying life there. So this uh, temple culture was purely exploitative. Jesus condemns this hypocritical nature. Especially if you turn to Matthew chapter 23, we see here again and again, woes were pronounced against these people, these scribes and the Pharisees. 23, chapter 23, Verse 5, they do all their deeds to be seen by, by others. And then verse 13, O to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Verse 15, O to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. O to you, blind guides, blind fools. O to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. O to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. 23, 25, 27, 29, and goes on. Who's to the Pharisees, the scribes? And especially if you read here, they say, verse 16, if anyone swears by the temple, it is nothing. Anyone swears by the temple, it is nothing. But, if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound by his oath. See, they give importance not to the, even to the temple, but to the gold in the temple. And verse 18, and if you say, if anyone swears by the altar, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift that is on the altar, he is bound by his oath. So this, of course, uh, uh, we are not expected to just you know, make all these vows and swearing. However, here it's very clear it shows that culture. And especially they taught you know, their dependence or their respect, the glory, 
for riches and wealth, the gold, the gift that was offered to the temple. In this context, Jesus curses the fig tree, the hypocritical nature of the tree, and cleanses the temple and sends out all the people selling these things. He says, my this father's house is a house of prayer. You have made it a den of robbers. This is a fulfillment of what we read from the book of Jeremiah. Book of Jeremiah is another book where the prophet challenges the people. They did all sorts of evil and they took refuge under the temple. They said, temple, temple. And they said that there is security in the temple. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 2 onwards. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, hear the word of the Lord, all you men of Judah, who enter these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your deeds. Do not trust in the deceptive words. This is the temple of the Lord, temple of the Lord. Verse 9, you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, make offerings to Baal, and then say we are delivered. Verse 11, has this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers? There, Jeremiah raises this question. Has my house become den of robbers? And the same thing is quoted here by Jesus. And so it's very clear that how the people were full of evil and hypocrisy acted as if they are holy acted as if they have very, very right, good, righteous life. And so the message comes there, amend your ways, otherwise you perish. Amend your ways. And Mark 11, 18, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and the scribes heard it and were seeking to destroy him, for they feared him, because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. Did Jesus teach there? More than teaching, more than words, he acted, he cleansed, Send the people out and then simply said that this is my father's house of prayer. So, through this lesson, through this teaching, he invited them to repent, to amend their ways. So the crowd also was astonished at his teach. So this is a, that's why I said, enacted parable which teaches the lesson to the people. The second lesson comes out from here is about prayer. When Jesus said or cursed the tree Right, and they were the disciples were wondering, and then Jesus told them, verse 22, Have faith in God. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown away into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass it will be done for him. 
bend your knees. Pray. That is the lesson given to the disciples here. If you pray without doubt in your heart, if you believe, if you have faith in God, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And he says that if you say to this mountain, he didn't say if you say to a mountain. In uh, actually, I, before coming to Baldwin's as a chaplain, I was uh, serving as a pastor in Whitefield Madhuri Church. Every Friday we have fasting prayer, and that is known as moving the mountains prayer. Fasting prayer. Moving the mountains prayer. Yes, when we pray, we can move mountains. That is the faith we should have. Here, Jesus is pointing out to this mountain. In Jerusalem, which mountain do you see? Or on the way to Jerusalem, nearer to Jerusalem? It is Mount Zion, the holy mountain. Even in that example, Jesus giving this mountain. So that mountain which has the temple, if it is thrown into the sea, Jesus would have been happy. It looked like that. Isn't it? Say it to this mountain. Anyhow, here, of course, the lesson is on prayer. Of course, this is a real question. How powerful is our prayer? How powerful is our faith? How deep is our faith? Often we say if we have a, a faith like a grain of a mustard seed, the same thing, of course, we read in Matthew 17 and then Luke 17. Matthew 17 also says about the mountain there, this mountain. Maybe that refers to Mount Hermon. So to displace the mountain, such a power, but is it possible that whatever we ask, we can believe that it will happen, that it will be ours, that it will be fulfilled? I heard a message from a doctor who worked in the North India explaining about the various persecutions going on there. And there he is mentioning, should we pray for the coming parliamentary election? Actually, a few days before, Archbishop called all the Christians to fast and pray, the last Friday, I think. Should we pray for the parliamentary elections? If we pray, will God hear and answer? Of course, during the last assembly elections, we prayed, many, many groups, even in our church, we prayed sincerely, fervently. God answered our prayers. We were so happy, we rejoiced. Some change happened in the government. Same thing can happen now. And then he raises this question because he was uh, working in UP. So still persecutions are going on and they were praying. Churches were demolished. Missionaries were tortured, put in prison. And the elections came. We all prayed. Maybe throughout the nation we prayed. God did not answer. So now, will God answer? Should we pray? This is the question. So of course, here it's very clear lesson for us that we should bend our knees and pray with faith. And we cannot doubt in our heart. Ultimately, God's will be 
fulfilled and if we know that what is the best for the people what is god's will god's will for the people is always good so we can pray without hesitation without doubt any hope especially we are called to come to the temple and offer our prayers and also its prayers for all nations the court of gentiles was occupied by the cattle and other things so jesus cleared that so that all could come only in mark's gospel it's very clearly mentioned for all nations it's a fulfillment of what isaiah saw as a vision and let us also pray with that same vision that all nations will be saved and maybe there are many mountains which can be pushed displaced and particularly we need to precisely we have to pray for this mountain at that time reading the signs of the time what should we pray for we must listen from god and then pray to god fervently so amend your ways bend your knees and third lend your helping hands your healing hands your reconciling hands lend your hands we see verse 25 and whenever you stand praying forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses so here again a lesson on prayer is given to us when we pray fervently we also should have that heart of accepting the others even the enemies we must be willing to reconcile with one another if you have any grudge against grievance against anyone we should lend our hands of fellowship and also lend hands of healing as we read in the parallel passage in Matthew chapter 21 when Jesus entered the temple the lame the blind and the children entered we know that the lame and the blind were always kept outside the temple they cannot enter into the temple but Jesus extended the invitation so when they entered they were healed the same thing happened in the life of peter and john as we read in book of acts as they entered the gate beautiful gate neither gold nor silver we have but in the name of jesus get up he rose he leaped jumped and entered into the temple Yes, let us lend our hands of healing, hands of restoration, hands of forgiveness. Then there is meaning in our prayers. First Corinthians chapter 13, we have that hymn of love. There was two. Even if I have faith that moves mountains if I don't have love I am nothing yes on that day Jesus taught through the parables the enacted parables of cursing the tree and cleansing the temple these messages amend your ways bent your knees and lend your hands may God help us to commit ourselves and especially the things happened on that day 
led the people to conspire against him. The, they planned to kill him, but they were afraid of the people. That's what we read there. So the journey already started, journey to the cross through his teaching. It's a week of teaching. The next day there were a lot of controversial questions and debates and discussions that continued. Jesus, when he, the Judas came to betray him to Gethsemane, they came without clubs and everything. He said, I was teaching in the temple daily. Why didn't you arrest me there? Anyhow, he was arrested on that day. Daily he was teaching. Through his powerful teaching, he brought transformation to many people. At the same time, the enmity also grew. So let us read these verses with total devotion and let it really enlighten us. Even if we need to take up the cross, we must be able to engage in the question of justice and engage in prayer and engage in service. Amen.